Anderson for the record. Just ahead, the conversation around a statewide shortage of prosecutors is getting louder. This is something that has been building. Plus, UW Law School joins a growing revolt against a system that has determined university prestige for decades. It's really not a reliable source of information. And we sit down with another candidate for the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Welcome to For the Record, I'm Naomi Coles. On both sides of the criminal justice aisle, prosecutors and public defenders are in short supply in Wisconsin. Nowhere has that come into closer focus and in my discussion with now former district attorney for Dodge County, Kurt Klomberg, that was a couple weeks ago on this show. Faced with being the only prosecutor in his office, he resigned. But far from alone, this crisis has been building for years. I'm joined by Cheryl Daniels, recent president of the State Bar of Wisconsin, to discuss. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. So give me a big picture. This is, his resignation has put this issue into the spotlight right now, but it is certainly not an issue that just started. Oh, absolutely not. This is something that has been building. We know uh, as a state um, that we have been seeing uh, the need for all types of attorneys all over the, you know, in many areas of the state that we are not seeing, that we are just not getting younger people there. It's a, it's a shortage of actually fewer numbers just th there, but we're also an aging state and um, young people are tend to want to go into the, to the cities um, as it. Plus, they want to go make sure that they um, are able to pay or off their student loans and start working so that they build up their equity in lots of things, their home, um, their family, all those kinds of, of things. And I think particularly with the prosecutors and the, the state public defenders, you're talking about very dedicated people who, but who have significant um, caseloads and in um, working on issues that are tough on both sides of, 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 the, of the, if you will, the divide. It's not really divide. It's really that the system has to work together. If we will, we need to have both your uh, your assistant to, um, district attorneys and your assistant state public defenders, um, enough of them to work on these issues and figure out a way to move forward with, uh, you know, with the whole criminal justice system. What are the potential impacts when, I mean, granted, you know, there's, I, I believe we heard from the state that they have three retired prosecutors in Dodge County right now, right. kind of helping cover the workload while there's no full-time prosecutors there, but they're not all full-time. There's still other issues. They're looking for a district attorney to step up. What's the impact when this, when this, when this kind of fallout happens in a county for criminal justice? Well, you end up, no matter what you do, there's there's a, going to be a, a backlog as people kind of get up to speed on wh what they're dealing with, who they're dealing with on the other side. You um, have the uh, when you don't have speedy tr speedier trials, you have uh, the impact on the community is huge. It's for anyone who's a victim of crime, it's um, devastating to have things take longer and longer time. But you also have the problems where witnesses um, have more difficulties. You uh, either having them, you know, step up and actually be available for if you need to go to trial, and um, whether they remember things correctly. Because think about yourself, how easy it is to forget the details that you need to have in order to have if you really have somebody who's going who who did the um, was the perpetrator and committed the crime you still have to be able to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt so you need need things to be done in a way that gets things moving quicker you also would never want the situation where a, a, a defender rightly is requests the speedy trial it can't be done on a on a case that might be a, a, a very, very, you know, hard, awful case. And the potential of, a, of a, an alleged criminal being let out for the time period while, but before the trial comes, um, who is a significant criminal, that's a fear that, you know, all the politicians play on, but it actually is something that could happen. Now, we, as you mentioned, this crisis has been building for a long time. This is something that other counties potentially have experienced. In, in your recent memory, can you cite any other specific instances in other counties in Wisconsin that might have gotten close to 
the situation that Dodge County now finds itself in. I would say that one of the happens in the rural counties is that you've got the uh, the district attorney, but they really need that assistant up in there because there may be only two of them, and they really they can't get them. They they just don't. They've been having it open. This is, uh, I think, right now there's about a 12 percent vacancy rate of the uh, all over the state of of assistant district attorneys. All of this comes down to money, right? We were just talking. These, you know, an assistant district attorney is starting at roughly just over twenty seven dollars an hour right out of the gate, and when you consider student loans, when you consider the seven years minimum of school that they've been through, that's not a lot, especially when you can make so much more in the private sector or even in other government position, right. positions. Obviously, you know, when I was talking to Kirk Klomberg a couple weeks ago, he says minimum $70,000 in order to even start fixing this crisis. Yeah. Legislatively, what, what happens there? What, what can... Well, the, what's what? There's been a budget paper that's been put into place um, by the. It's really a coalition of of of. But the state bar is one of the of the partners with this coalition of the district attorneys and the state public defender's office to work on this issue. It's. It might take as much as I, I when I was kind of adding up the numbers on both sides. It might be a twenty to thirty million dollar upgrade that needs to be done. But when you think about it, it's pretty much a drop in the bucket. If you're looking at a $7.1 billion surplus that we have in the state. No, I don't want to give away all the money. I was a state attorney myself. I understand completely that you have to work within this, a system that you have. But when you have a major issue that everyone seems to care about, and you're talking about that much, you know, like those dollars within how little that is within that larger, uh, you know, picture that we have. I think we need to, we are all working to say we need to do this. We absolutely need to do this. Are there any promising signs from particularly legislative leaders, Republican leaders, that they're going to make this a priority? We know that um, and are pretty sure that the budget that's going to come out from the governor will include monies for it. But we need the legislature to say, okay, whatever we start with as far as the budget goes, this has to be a priority because we know and we've run on this issue that we will keep our communities safe. And the only way you can do that is to keep the criminal justice system working well. Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on and talking about the issue. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. All right, coming up, a conversation with Dan Kelly, conservative candidate for the Wisconsin Supreme Court.